You're listening to Aperture and Shutter Speed on Lone Star Internet Radio. It is 3.02. We're here every Wednesday at 3 o'clock. This is Dick Schisler hanging out here with uh, my buddy. Tom Moore, trmorephotos.com. That's right. Today is April 30th, the last day of the month. So that means what, Tom? We're talking about neutral density filters. And nature photography. And nature photography. And the histogram. And the histogram. We got No, we got, we got a good lineup today. Yeah. Uh, but this is our last show about nature photography and those two things that Tom have mentioned about histograms and neutral density filters are very important when shooting nature photographs. So uh, we are still giving away those Taste Fest tickets. That's four Taste Fest tickets to those who submit the best nature photograph to Lone Star Internet Radio. All you got to do is go to our Facebook page, like us on Lone Star Internet Radio, and then uh, submit your photo to us. And then you have a chance to win four tickets, a $60 value, to Taste Fest, May 8th from 5 p.m. to 8 p.m. at the Lone Star Convention Center. Basically what it is, it's uh, Conroe's and local Montgomery County restaurants and beverage vendors are coming together at the Lone Star Convention Center, and it's it's a free for all for food and drinks. Uh, the ticket does include two adult beverages, beverages, so that means each person with a ticket does get two drinks, which is a great deal, fifteen dollar value each ticket. It really is. So uh, it's it's a pretty neat deal, and I hope you guys submit your photos. Very easy way to win. Uh, just go to Lone Star Net Radio on Facebook and submit your photo. We hope you guys, uh, or wish you guys, good luck. So, and especially with the tips today for the neutral density, you can definitely use those yeah. to win four tickets. Go to Galveston and get some beautiful shots. That's true. The sun going down. Yeah, the the weather's been beautiful for the past about mm. six days. Amazing. And especially when it gets to midday, there are zero clouds. So, it's just the sun, the sun exposing itself to your photographs. Having the neutral density filter is pretty important. But before we get into today's show, I think uh, we're going to talk. I'm going to talk to Tom about what's been going on. Anything going on with you, Tom? Yeah, I delivered some uh, really nice uh, footage of a wedding and about a 10 minute wedding condensed version with also the full, uh, all the footage. Uh, so I shot with two memory cards in my camera and I delivered them all of the footage in one card and then combined it on into a 10 minute type condensed version and they're they're in tears they were in tears they it's always it. nice to bring them to their knees they love that yes that's great so you you used your camera did you use your jib at all or you I use a jib yes that's cool yeah how long how long let's you know it's, it's important to tell people is when you get new equipment I always ask how long does your productivity go or no, how long does the average job increase because like w- with a thing like a jib you get more shots you get more options and typically when you have more options that means that means you're spending more time mm-hmm. because you're offering a better product the end result well and i think with the jib you're getting quality so you're saving time because when you do a pan across the audience you're uh, not getting a bunch of stuttering and a bunch of camera shake and what you shoot is quality footage and um they go wow that that looks really good and um it's it just makes a difference it just adds that dimension of hollywood in there it does it really does add a quality to what you're trying to do and i was funny is they're very inexpensive to make and also but they're expensive to buy especially but the one that you got it has a little bit more options and it doesn't fall apart on you it's very reliable yeah it's uh you could, you know, batter down a wall with that sucker if you yeah. wanted to get aggressive. It's pretty, you know. it's pretty intimidating. Yeah. Uh, yeah, but that's great that you got one. And uh, but we can go. We can actually, you can use that in nature photo photography too. Oh, absolutely. Yeah. Uh, yeah. One thing that's funny about the way we all take our photographs, it's all, all about perspective too. So if you have a chance of increasing your height by, you know, ten feet, you might as well take advantage of it and. Yeah, and if you have a, a cable release that's a wireless, you can set your camera and use a, a jib and set it up 10, 15 feet off the ground and, and shoot uh, way, you know, birds in flight or birds in a tree or just let it sit there and let the birds come around and uh, use that release. I, I do want to let the audience know we, we had a question a while back about what is a jib? 
And if you're a photographer, you probably don't know what a jib is, mainly because you're not a cinema photographer. Right. A cinema photographer. Uh, basically what a jib is, it's an extended arm that you attach the camera on one end, and then you can use an anchor point or a pivot point on the other end with weight, and you go up and down. So it's like a seesaw. Think of a seesaw exactly. and the camera on one end, and you're on the other. So increasing the height or lowering below the waist, it, it kind of, depending on what kind of jib you use, it can have that stability plus interesting motion with the camera. So anytime you watch a movie that the camera's going really high up in the air, they're probably using a gym, jib to create that uh, that segment. Like, for example, the beginning of Forrest Gump with the flat, with the uh, feather flowing in. They basically filmed the – they didn't actually film a feather flying through the air. They probably just filmed the top of the city and slowly went down with just filming nothing. Just the city. And just add the feather. And then add the feathers. So that was probably all done all on a jib. And then using and a green screen for the feather? No, uh, no they, they probably just digitally put it in there. Oh, I think, put, I think yeah. they literally took just, they, they basically storyboarded where they were outside oh, okay. and says, oh, we're going to start looking at this part of the city. Right. And we're going to end here and bring the jib down at, you know, you know, one foot every eight seconds or something like that. Because the, the, the use of a jib really does add that dynamic to what you're shooting. Especially when you're doing a wedding, you can get the high up shots, and it becomes more natural to the human eye. So you get that cinema effect, mm -hmm. like man, this is a movie. You're mm -hmm. in it, and uh, it, it adds quality to your product. And a lot of products for your cameras and stuff we talk about on Aperture and such should be add quality to your end product. Especially in the camera world, you can tell a world of difference with audio by using a shotgun mic compared to the onboard mic on, on your camera. Because it zeroes in on your subject. And, shotgun and also, you can also tell the difference between, you know, a Rebel and a 5D in quality of oh, the of photograph. Course. I mean, Absolutely. it's unbelievable the yeah. jump of quality you spend the extra three grand on, two grand on. And a lot of people are hesitant, especially amateur photographers, about bumping up what kind of stuff. But, you know, every piece of equipment counts towards that better end product, in my opinion. And uh, I think the n neutral density f uh, filter we're going to talk about is almost it's it really is when when it comes to nature photography almost as important as a UV filter having that always on your camera you should always have a neutral density filter on you when you're going out into the world and there's also more extreme I, my favorite thing Tom showed me today was the extreme neutral density uh, yes. filters that are not even like they literally attach over your camera right one that has a clear section on the bottom that graduates up and gets darker and darker so that you can put that filter in an environment like a sunset with the sun going well, the, down the best way to explain it to people i, I will actually we'll get into that in the next segment but uh, that's that's when we get into the neutral density and talk I knew about you were the history. Cut me off there. well yeah because we're almost <laughs> going to break here but no I, that somebody asked the question about the jib and that's what a jib is folks if uh, you can use it for fo photographs the only thing you have to realize with photographs is you won't be able to view the viewfinder there are some attachments for cameras especially higher end cameras that you can literally have a, uh, a viewer's cable hooked up to your laptop to show you what your camera's looking at. That's on the newer cameras. I think uh, most of, I think 5D, the newer 5D Mark III's have that capability. Uh, and they even have the capability of taking the photo from your laptop. And now you can get Wi-Fi wi yeah, devices get, and you can take You can multiple, have wireless. You can have wireless it's about capabilities. It's $900. But, but you it's, can, it's still, you're it's still doable, able to it's do possible. it. And it's, it's actually, it's a pretty cool tool to, to mess around with. But yeah. a, a jib, that's what a jib is, folks. Think of a seesaw. Think of the camera on one end and weights on the other. And you can do some really cool stuff with it. Uh, it's just, it's it, it brings up the production quality of your work. It brings work. tears to my eyes. Yeah, it brings tears to his clients. <laughs> But yeah, so that's what, what's going on with Aperture and Shutter Speed today. I want to encourage those who are listening in to call in. Tell us what you think about what we're talking about. This is a community radio show about film and photography, and we'd love to have you guys participate. Call in 936-647-3776, 936-647-3776. We'd love for you to call in, and we'll talk about whatever you want. You know what? Uh, we're we're going to go ahead and go into the break. Okay. So when we come back, we're going to talk about neutral density filters. Right now, you need to go on your computer and look up neutral density uh, filters to get a better idea of visually what we're talking about since this is a radio show. And don't forget the histogram. Don't forget the histogram. That's true. And we'll be right back on Aperture and Shutter Speed on Lone Star Internet Radio. Did you know there are over 800 abused children in foster care in Montgomery County? Will you help make a difference? 
I'm Susan, a volunteer with Casa Child Advocates of Montgomery County. April is Child Abuse Awareness and Prevention Month. Casa Child Advocates trains and supports volunteers to be the voice of children who have been removed from their home because of abuse or neglect. We need volunteers just like you to speak up for these children. To learn more about becoming an advocate, please visit casaspeaksforkids.com or call 936-441-5437. Oh, I'm Mark Hader. And this is Cindy Cochran inviting you to join us on the Cindy and Mark Show each weekday morning from 10 to 11 here on Lone Star Internet Radio. Super Cindy, but I believe it's the Mark and Cindy Show. Huh? Yes, it is, Mark. And it's broadcast live on Lone Star Internet Radio here in beautiful downtown Conroe. Oh, the exciting things we'll talk about, the interesting guests you'll get to meet, the wonderful gifts we'll give away, and the tons wait, of... Wait, wait, wait. Gifts... There are no gifts. I'm not giving away anything. Why, why do you get to decide on what we do? It's Mark and Cindy, remember? Oh, yeah? Well, so, ladies and gentlemen, tune in, and we'll all find out who gets to decide stuff. Weekday mornings at 10, here on Lone Star Internet Radio. How was that? Yeah, it could have been worse. You could have sung your part. Oh, yeah, wait. It's the Mark and Cindy Show. The Mark and Cindy, Cindy. Show. The Mark and Cindy, Cindy. Show. Is the Mark and Cindy Show. Play? Get your taste buds ready for Taste Fest 2014 presented by HEB. This year, Taste Fest will be on May 8th from 5 to 8 p.m. at the Lone Star Convention and Expo Center. Featuring local food and beverage vendors and local restaurants that are members of the Greater Conroe, Lake Conroe Area Chamber of Commerce. We've partnered with the Montgomery County Food Bank, so bring in your canned food items to be entered into our raffle. Tickets are $15 for adults and $5 for children. To purchase tickets, visit www.conroe.org or your local HEB Conroe market. See you out on May 8th at the Lone Star Convention Center for Taste Fest. You're listening to Lone Star Internet Radio. I'm Tom Moore, trmorephotos.com, with my buddy here, Dick Schisler. And yo, yo, yo. we are going to be talking about the histogram and the use of a histogram. Okay, I'm just going to draw on a piece of paper here. Just um, you got just got a line. Okay, and one end is white, the other end is black or dark, and your histogram is going to look like this. Okay, if I shoot at 100 shutter speed, I'm going to be in the white area when I go to 200 the histogram is going to move more center when I go to 400 it can even get more centered so if you get a bell like effect here so this looks like a bell you're in more center and you're not too white you're not too getting you're more in a neutral zone and you say if you go up to 800 here your bell is going to be way over here and it, it can have a bunch of ripples in it so the histogram can be really cool because if you're in the sun and you're looking at the back of your camera like this with this 5d mark 3 and you're trying to see your histogram uh, or sorry you see your photograph um, it might not uh, appear as you want it but as you get centered then uh, when you go in post-production you'll know hey i got the right exposure because my histogram is a confirming with this little bell here effect that i would say 800 shutter speed of 800 or 400 would be a, a desirable in post-production can save time also choosing the sunlight icon and i'm shooting in raw always shoot in raw i do um <clears throat> and uh, using aperture is going to convert to raw immediately so then that's your histogram and you can also obviously look it up on the internet and uh, google it and and just get into it because it will help you a lot now let's talk about neutral density filter you have the neutral density Wait, filter that's the end of the histogram that, well, what else what do you want to say Spit it out. Well, I told you, man, see, Tom, Tom just goes for it. But one thing to understand, you got to understand what the histogram is for. 
And when you're taking photos, there's an option. Do you talk about the option in the, on the camera where you can preview every file with the histogram? Mm, that's what I've shown on the back of the film. Oh, the well, they can't see it. Well, I'm doing the best I can with what I got. Uh, basically, the histogram is a useful tool to understanding what your camera's seeing at the current spot you're taking a picture of. The bell effect is something that a general photo is what you want. That You want that bell effect. And what it looks like, the histogram basically gives you all the spectrum of light from left to right, dark being the far left, far right being the light of 255. That's like the, the range of light going into your camera. And so when you're taking a picture and you want to meet in the middle because you want the picture to be balanced with darkness, showing the detail with light, showing enough showing enough uh, color and things. Contrast. Yeah, contrast. Saturation. Yeah. So one thing that I used when I was learning about my camera is in Photoshop, there is an option called Levels. And levels is a great way to look at the histogram. It's it basically is the histogram. That's what that's what it is, and it gives you manipulation of the histogram after the fact. And it kind of gives you an idea. Like, say you go out and you take a photo of a mountain with the sun, and you're trying to understand. Okay, so what happens if I shot a little lower shutter speed? You know that oh, I'm not gonna. I'm taking in more light, so let's add more light to it. So you adjust you adjust the far left of of the levels. And you add more light and see where that light is coming from because depending on where your source of light is, that's also where the histogram is going to show you like, oh, it's to the far right or far left of where that light's coming from. And you can counter, you can counteract it in the future. If you're like, okay, if my sun's to the right, I got to make sure to get enough shadows or enough darkness in my, my subject. To, and how are you going to get the shadows? To get in front, get in front of the uh, object. Or get the sun. But I mean, you're going to get more shadows by doing what? You're talking about the ND filter? Is that your nutri- Well, the nutrient density fil- filter, but you'll get more shadows by changing your shutter speed. Oh, right? yes. Adjusting your aperture and shutter speed. Right. Always. That's always your first option. And yes. then your filters are going to, and that neutral density is an exciting thing, especially the one that is an oblong shape that you have. Uh, it's actually glass that you slide in front of your. Your, yeah, I think with with understanding the, the understanding the histogram really gives you the start of you know how you're taking your pictures, and when we're when now we're going to move on to the neutral density, which is mm-hmm. a filter just like any other filters we talked about last week, like a polarizing filter. It's, they're you can buy circular ones that fit on your lens, and but then when the when there's even more extreme ones, which we'll get to later, because I think the extreme ones are very unique cases because they cost so much. It's kind 100, of one hundred and sixty dollars. Yeah, they average one hundred, and the whole setups can go up to like two fifty because you can get different variations of the light. But uh, one thing, can you explain to the audience what a neutral density filter is? Okay, well, the new neutral density filter that I'm thinking about actually is an oblong shaped uh, piece of glass. At the bottom is transparent. No, okay, that that's that's the extreme one. There's there the general neutral density. What is the purpose of a neutral density filter? Well, um, there's one that actually is has that you can actually rotate left and right. It has uh, it's more intense on the bottom or the top. How you rotate it, so you've got uh, a, a neutral, more a lighter uh, intensity, and it gets darker as it goes up. Uh, well, one one way what I'm, try, what I'm trying to what I'm trying to get to, Tom, is I'm thinking about the one I'm thinking. I know about. you want to you want to <laughs> talk about that, but that's a unique a unique situation. Basically, what the neutral density filter does is it lowers the al- amount of light going into the camera. So if you're taking a fit picture outside with no coverage at all in the sun, but you want to take a picture of a subject, there's too much light. This allows you without changing the shutter speed or the aperture. To lower the light, you're basically putting sunglasses over your camera, and that's like a polarizer. Hey, but, but the neutral density D filter, I want to talk about. Well, that's polarizer glass. But see, right. neutral density is the same kind of idea. Not just sunglasses, but it lowers the amount of light going into your camera, which allows you to keep the settings you want to keep on your camera while achieving the photograph you want to take. Because sometimes you have to adapt to the amount of light. So now 
that you're lower you're lowering the light you can keep the same aperture okay well let me ask you this yes what happens if you've got motion say you're in a setting you go to the beach and you've got water you know ebb and flow of the beach and the sun is going down and you've got a nice big rock there and water is flowing around uh, around the rock and there's a cool effect there so you want to get a, a soft effect with the sun without the sun blowing out the the effect on the rock with the water flowing around well, you want a real soft effect on the rock but you don't want the sun to blow it out so this is where this neutral density filter that i'm talking about comes in because it we, is clear on the bottom which is going to allow you oh yeah to well, get the action of the water i'm going to actually out talk dick schistler today that is my no, my no. goal you're, you're today still, yes. you're still you're, you're <laughs> okay so here we go wait wait wait, wait let me you got it no well let, let me wait. you asked me a question so i want to say so basically what you're trying to do, you're trying to achieve a shot where the light is, the sun is overexposing every shot you're taking. You're getting frustrated. Right. You're like, how the right. heck am I supposed to take a picture of this water? Because what happens is... But in, I want in, the action of the water. And waterfalls. I want that soft I know, look I know. on the and water. you got to explain people, when you're taking pictures of waterfalls, light is reflecting... Not waterfall. This is... This is an ebb and flow of the beach of, water coming of the water. In, of but basically, the water. what's happening... Not, so you've got two things. Right, you've got... I can turn you off. I just turned you off. I'm talking. I'm I'm the commander here. You forget, because uh, you got to you got to paint the picture for the audience. So the light is being reflected off the water. So you can't get take that picture of the rock because so much light is being reflected off the water because nothing's blocking the sun and too much light's being absorbed. So what what you need to figure out is how can I lower the light coming in from the sun while keeping enough light on my subject so I can take a picture of the rock. So when you're when you're talking about neutral density filter, we're, that's that's the solution right there, neutral density filter. And the one you're talking about, that you got you got to give people who don't know what you're talking about why the two different panes of color of glass. Because the one you're talking about, the way I describe it to people is if you remember in certain cars, if you look at the windshield, some right. windshield have natural right. tint that gradually exactly. goes up. Exactly, that's like a neutral density. That's filter. like a neutral density. Right. That's why I wanted to tell the audience, and you wouldn't let me speak because it's important to let the no, the okay. listener know that. Well, we're competing for time here. So that that is what the one they they call those kind of extreme neutral densities because they have so many different types of those because it's there's so many cool options. There's kits out there. But that's the, that's the picture I'm trying to paint for Tom's example is it looks like on a windshield. You're looking at the bottom where it's very clear, and then you're going up Graduates with your eyes, up. and then exactly. all of a sudden there's right. tint because right. you're, you know they didn't want sun getting in your eyes from the top. Right. So that's what your camera's looking through. Okay, so the exciting thing about that is, is that you can get the sun, which is not in motion, not detectable necessarily, unless the clouds are moving across it quickly, and then you can get the motion of the water swirling around the rock, and you can get that soft effect shooting still through the through the graduated effect, like Dick was saying, with a uh, windshield. It, you've seen them in the older cars where it gets blue at the top of, to keep the light out, and then at the bottom is clear. So you'll get that milky looking uh, soft effect with the motion. So you're getting two effects simultaneously of stopping the sun and getting the swirl of the water around the rock, which is a beautiful effect. Really love it. It really, it, it, that's what like, you gotta tell people when you're doing this waterfall shot, that's how they really achieve it. Right, because they you have to counter you have to counterbalance that sun because that sun's going to overexpose your shots every single time, and this is a it, it's almost like a, you're cheating the way to get your photo, but it's not necessarily cheating a bad thing. It's but you're you're working with you know light, you're work- transmitted light. You're working with reflected light on the water. You're working with soft light if you have clouds because the the soft light is going to make like a soft box, and then you have the hard light. So there's four different light effects you have coming in and that neutral density filter is going to give you the option of catching a lot at once instead of just catching one or two of the effects you're going to be able to catch maybe three out of four which is pretty exciting so light is king and photography again 
Yeah. Hard light, soft light, candle light. Yeah, really what it does is in the end it allows you to expose your uh, your your shutter speed more. You have more exposure. Right. It allows you more exactly. exposure, which is really cool. And I think if you want to take that waterfall shot or river shot or anything that has white, really high light motion, it allows, it a lot, allows some great motion shots while keeping, I guess, the quality up there with the details of the rocks and everything surrounding the motion that you want to keep right and keeping in mind you can shoot it like a a minute a second or a a 15th of a second at the sun with that neutral density filter because it's blotting out the the intense uh uv rays that can destroy your camera at that much uh time lapse and uh get that swirling effect so you can go down to like a whole second um and just get those really cool effects because of that gradation really neat love it that is our closing segment right there for this half hour and of I aperture just, and shutter speed i just speed. out talk dick Schistler. no you still didn't you didn't win it yes, is 328 when we come back you I think turned me off see i was still talking I can still, I'm trying to close up the segment. Now he's, he's trying still to talking. turn me off again. Well, yeah, because we're, we're, we're going to take a break. He's, he's got a power trip. We're, going, we're, we're taking a break from a after our show. We're here every Wednesday. All we'll right, be back okay. after this break. And uh, I'm Tom, a hey, guy. Tom, watch this. Tom, what are we talking about next? Uh, well, uh, we can uh, talk about sports photography that we're going to be talking yeah, about coming next up. month. Different ideas and stuff like that. Yeah, it sounds like, like, yeah like uh, barrel racing or bull riding or baseball and, you know, baseball school it's a good way to start into sports photography baseball yeah, and film too so yeah, we'll we'll, absolutely. we'll talk more about that when we come back on aperture and shutter speed feel free to call in 936-647-3776 and yell at us that's right we'll be right back after these messages yeah hi i'm joyce with the corner pub in downtown conroe We're located at the corner of Simonton and North Main, just across the street from the courthouse. The week starts off Monday with Open Mic, hosted by Alan, and Tuesday night's Open Mic, hosted by Jeremy Bankhead. And on Thursday evening, McFarland Jams. There's nightly drink specials available every night, all night. And don't forget, live entertainment every weekend. To see a full list of events, visit our website at thecornerpubinconroe.com. So come join us at the Corner Pub, where the deli is open late. Hi, I'm Tina, and I will be your host for a new program on Lone Star Internet Radio. I call it Retro Saturdays. Every Saturday at 5 p.m., I will be playing music from the 1930s to the 1970s. I will play a different genre of music every weekend of the month. You will hear big band music, jazz, 70s classic rock, and 60s oldies. Join us for Retro Saturdays at 5 p.m. every Saturday of the month. Go to IRLoneStar.com for more information on Retro Saturdays on Lone Star Internet Radio. My name is Cheryl Dudzik and I'm the Director of Community Development for Montgomery County Women's Center. Montgomery County Women's Center supports victims of family violence and sexual assault in Montgomery County and surrounding areas. I'd like to personally invite you to make plans now to join us at the Wild West Wine Fest on Thursday, May 1st from 6 to 9 p.m. at Macy's Furniture Gallery at the Woodlands Mall. We are proud to partner with Macy's Furniture Gallery for the 13th year for this popular event, which is our major fundraiser benefiting the Montgomery County Women's Center. This fun evening includes samples of signature dishes from local restaurants, along with fine wine tastings provided by Genuine Tasting Room. Tickets are $100. Sponsorships are still available. For more information, visit winefesttx.org or call 936-441. Four zero four four. You're listening to Lone Star Internet Radio. I'm Tom Moore, trmorephotos.com, with my buddy over here, Dick Schistler. Hey! And we want to talk a little bit about soft light and hard light. 
uh, going out today is a very sunny day and uh, when you go outside start using eyes of a photographer don't just go out and say wow it's bright today where are my sunglasses you know if you want to start planning a photo shoot like you want to shoot flowers are very popular right now uh, just go out to your garden where the, the f flowers you have a subject and, and just look at them at different times of the day. Look at in the morning, look in the evening, look at like right now it's 3.30 so you have real direct sunlight so the shadows are going to be different. So when the sun is out like, they're, they're, like this, there are no clouds to create that large soft box effect. Um, your shadows are going to be very, very hard. They're going to be deep shadows. Uh, the colors are going to have a lot of density to them. Uh, the uh, uh, appearance is going to be, you know, just sharp. Edges are going to be sharp. The shadows are going to be dark. Uh, if you just look at your shadow on the ground, it's going to be very dark as opposed to, you know, a cloudy sky where you might not have a shadow at all. Um, so uh, skin tones are going to maybe have more contrast, have a redder face if you will uh, uh, if there are a lot of clouds then you won't have that uh, you also won't have shadows around the eyes you won't have that we call it the raccoon effect where your eyes are real you know shadowed and you have shadows under the chin area uh, there again that's where your reflector comes in um, so you can reflect the light back and eliminate those shadows in the eyes so a hard light uh, opposed to soft light and um, also you can use candles uh, say if you're inside uh, going from the outside to the inside and you want to say photograph uh, a couple for a magazine uh, dining and uh, you want to have an effect in the background uh, you can have candles on the table maybe one but if you have candles also in the background say on pedestals or on uh, a fireplace mantle or something like that you can have say 10 or 15 candles uh, glowing and get a real soft effect and uh, maybe have some soft boxes uh, and have some man-made light and and turn those down uh, so that you can get just a really nice effect with with light so light you know just playing with light light is cool it's fun it's a lot of fun i love that you should always bring it to your studio because i think we talked about it last month about creating your own little home studio yeah and especially putting those those candles that's what's really neat a lot a lot of goes into a photograph and a lot of people don't realize that especially in film if you're doing uh, most movies i'm surprised a lot of actors don't wear sunglasses on set because so the amount light. of light that right. they have to deal with is unbelievable, and that's and that's what's kind of neat for photo photography because it creates the illusion of like a perfect human being almost mm -hmm. when you're looking at magazine covers and not even in post editing. Like you can do so much with light as you take the shot, mainly because it uh it it adds it adds so much more depth to it. It allows the camera to do what it was made to do. Instead of your instead of going outside and you know working with clouds and no clouds and then oh the dusk is coming and dawn and all that kind of stuff it's, it's really it, when you have control over the light you can really take some great photos and shoot some really good film and that's when you can tell a good photo from a great photo is the light control of the light in my opinion that's how that's how you're able to do it and what what's funny is in our next segment I guess next month we're going to be doing motion photography really that's kind of the overall theme but really focus on sports. Because achieving those shots are it's very difficult when the elements are not in your favor. Uh, a lot of photography in sports today is it's getting more like a social media aspect. Uh, it has to be immediate. Got to get that uploaded as fast as possible. How are you going to take the beautiful photos? And I think ESPN they still have that edition every year, the photo edition, where they have they designate twelve to fifteen pages of the best photo photograph sports photographs taken that year. And I think a lot of people are losing that because of just how fast the photo world is going. And when you yourself are trying to get into the game, especially if you're trying to be a professional sports photographer, that's that's a whole another beast. Because no one there's there's not enough individual respect for the game unless you're the, like one of those top guys who've been in the game for forty years. And that's when you get the name recognition. That's a very hard game to get into. And but it was very difficult. But it's also one of the most fun. Like personally, I've ever had is being able to be well being exposed to those to that world of shooting baseball 
and shooting basketball because those are completely different scenarios to shoot photography and especially for film i think a lot of people don't realize how much really goes into film production of shooting uh, action scenes because and then with the greatest thing about film is so many people have seen it so you can use different sources like for example you watch like the matrix how they were able to d do that scene where he sits there and dodges bullets because they use cameras. They literally used cameras and surrounded him with cameras and took photographs. And that was one of the neatest things I've seen when you're like thinking outside the box, how to achieve the shot. You, do, you do you know what scene I'm talking yep, about? Sure do. And Where the bullets are spinning and it's showing light or effects around the actual spin of the bullet. Yeah. Well, see, that's all computer generated. I'm talking mm -hmm. how they got him, the actual subject of Keanu Reeves, to be able to bend over uh, and get that 360 oh, yeah. effect of right. going around his body. Because that's right. really what it is, it's just cameras. Mm -hmm. Just really fast, uh, high shutter speed and controlled light. So I don't know what the aperture was. But it was, it, they could go do, 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 real quick. It was really quick in how they set it up. We'll we'll talk more about that, especially, uh, but also sports photography where you have to adjust because you're going to be changing posi positions a lot. And like, but baseball, you're kind of in, in, stuck in the same position. But for sports like soccer and football, where the the place of play is always going to be changing, uh, it's and it's a very interesting dynamic learning how to get those photos. So yeah. we'll be talking about that next month. Yeah, and don't don't shoot sports photography from the stands. You're going to have to go on the field to shoot them, unless you've got a, you know, 800 millimeter lens or something, because it it just looks awful. It doesn't work. I've seen these moms do it, and it's just it's ridiculous. So get your pass. You go go talk to the authority you need to talk to, and get on the field and shoot from the field. It makes a huge difference. No, I, I yeah, well, there's that, that's going to be a fun month. And yeah. so we want you guys to get involved too. So with all your sports photos, make sure to submit them through Aperture and Shutter Speed. You can look us up on Facebook and then also Lone Star Internet Radio. Uh, I think we're going to take a quick break and then we're going to close up the show with, uh, I guess, just some announcements about what's going on next week and then about our little contest for four Taste Fest tickets. Right, Tom? Yeah. Okay. So Absolutely. what uh, we're going to do is we're going to take our break. Talk about barrel racing. Barrel next racing. Week. That's yeah, what. Next week, barrel racing. Okay, barrel racing. Yeah. We're just in time for missing the fair, right? No. Okay. We'll be back on Aperture and Shutter Speed after these messages. The Conroe Art League is a nonprofit entity promoting the visual arts in Montgomery County. They've evolved over the last 49 years into one of the premier artist groups in the greater Houston area. The Conroe Art League is now permanently housed in the 100-year-old, recently remodeled Maidley Building in historic downtown Conroe. Exhibits of local artists, sculptures, and painters are changed periodically in the downstairs gallery with admission free to the public. Art classes and demonstrations in a variety of media are provided in the upstairs studios. The mission of the Conroe Art League is to encourage artistic development and cultivate an appreciation of the visual arts through education, exhibitions, and community outreach. For more information, call area code 936-756-9572 or visit their website at www.conroeartleague.com. Do you ever wonder what's going on in the business community? Are you looking for ways to get plugged in? Cassandra Roshan here, Director of Membership Development with the Greater Conroe, Lake Conroe Area Chamber of Commerce. And I would like to invite you to tune in to Chamber Chat. Tune in the first Tuesday of every month at 11 a.m. so you will be in the know for all Chamber happenings for the month. Each month, the Chamber offers two free lunch and learn sessions, a networking breakfast, business after hours, membership luncheon, as well as many other special events throughout the year. I will give you a rundown of all programs and events for the month, as well as interview our speakers and hosts of these events. So grab a cup of coffee and tune in to Chamber Chat the first Tuesday of every month at 11 a.m. Chat with you then. This is Rick Schisler, the host of the Weekly Business Hour. Have you ever thought about maybe, possibly, even considering LASIK? Then call my friends at Man Eye Institute, 1-800-MY-VISION, and talk to them about a free LASIK consultation. The thing about Man Eye Institute is they want their patients to be happy. That's their number one goal. Whether you decide to have LASIK 
if you decide to have another procedure, if you decide to wait, whatever it is, the folks at Man Eye Institute want you to be happy and informed and comfortable with your decision. That's why I never hesitate to recommend a free LASIK consultation for anyone who's even thinking about maybe getting LASIK. 1-800-MY-VISION is the Man Eye Institute number because you get to walk through the process, have a thorough eye exam, and have all your questions answered. Before you leave Man Eye, you'll know exactly what your options are and you can make the right decision for you. So don't hesitate. Call Man Eye Institute now for a free LASIK consultation at one of their nine Houston and Austin area offices, including right here in the Woodlands. 1-800-MY-VISION. That's 1-800-698-4746. Discover more right now when you visit maneye.com about the benefits of LASIK eye surgery. This is Lone Star Radio. I'm Tom Moore with TR Moore Photos. There's go, goes Dick messing with the sliders again. He's trying to cut me off. I'm having fun. He's got an ego trip going here, guys. He's huge. He, he's huge just got a this issue show with trmorephotos.com. We're going to talk about, we're going to wrap it up, baby. That's right. Today. Nature photography wrap up. That's, wrap up. That's what we're going to do right now. It's it's uh, 343. We got plenty of time. Why would I have a jib? The reason I have a jib, it's like I was just telling you, is that it gives you... I told you I don't want to talk about this jib anymore. It gives you a dimension that is above your competition that just gives you a professional look. You can grow hair in front of your eyes, your hair down, you know, in front of your eyes like it, and people won't care because they're looking at your jib, right? Don't shave, don't bathe, anything, you know, and just cool. Okay, then you got the neutral density filter, how wonderful, how cool that is. You got astrophotography... You've got a blood moon coming, another blood moon coming Thanksgiving Day, which is, you know, really? I'm, I'm going to get it this time. I missed it. You know, I, I didn't get up at two in the morning, but uh, I'm going to do whatever it takes to get my blood moon shots this time. And then uh, I'm committed. I, well, you, okay. I don't think Tom really understands what we're doing right now. We are closing up. We're doing a wrap up. A wrap up. Okay. Right. So the That's blood moon, astrophotography. We talked about different types of filters, right? And I think probably I was wrapping up the month. green screen. We talked about all that kind of stuff. So if you right. if you are just now tuning in, and you don't know what the hell we're talking about. <gasps> check out our oh. past shows and our archives on SoundCloud and also YouTube uh, to get a little better idea of who we are. And you actually get the ctrmorphos.com and me and in, in the flesh on YouTube. So look up Aperture and Shutter Speed, our Lone Star Internet Radio. I think out of all of our shows. Probably the most unique one would be, would have been this month is the astrophotography because that world of photography is still it's considered one of the first scientific areas of photography. So if you want to be considered a scientist, become an yeah, astrophotographer. A scientist. Well, because that's how they used to use they used to use the photographs of the moon to determine things. Actually, I think that's how they came out with uh, the positions of the moon have to do with waves. I think they started looking at pictures of the moon and how it changed because we were. You know, because it was in waves. Yeah, I didn't follow the that. waves, the gravity, and how. Oh, the waves. Yeah, people look at photos all oh, the time. You're talking about waves and stars like and galaxies. Yeah. Oh, like yeah. they're able to see that far. I mean, the, you know, this just didn't just appear, right? Right. This type of technology just didn't happen. It's been around since before so, we and then, were. And then the green screen. We talked about that. I think that was one of the coolest. I'm still things. using green screen, you know, a lot. You should. Yeah. yeah absolutely. I, I, it, what's What's amazing to me is that having the capability of understanding green screen gives you more options to sell your photos because absolutely. what what happens is with photography is a lot of people don't understand the world of it. So if I come to you and I see you with the camera, I immediately expect you to be able to do everything. Like, oh, I want you to take pictures of these models, but I want to use these models in magazines across the world using it as product placements. So using the green screen gives, gives you more flexibility of taking that model out and be able to copy-paste them on different billboards, backgrounds, whatever. You can put them in Egypt. You can put them in Venice. the ocean, under the ocean, wherever. Right. Having that green screen allows a cleaner product. Cleaner. You can turn her into a mermaid. You could. Yeah. But uh, green screens are really cool, especially if you're doing nature photography because – Sometimes people like to take pictures of flowers and put them in other places. Right. So uh, probably the greatest use that most people don't know about green screen would be movie movie posters. 
A lot of people don't know this, but I would say about 60%, 70% of all movie posters aren't real at all. They're green screen. They're, most of the parts are green screen mm-hmm. and slowly put together. So it's almost like you get Brad Pitt and someone says, we need to get Brad Pitt holding the skunk that's in the movie. But Brad Pitt will never hold a skunk. Right. So they, they figure out a model. With, Neither would I, by the way. Well, I, they, they would get a model who would have similar a build to Brad Pitt have him green screen him like his body but his arm and take a picture of the arm and the squirrel and you can tell probably the biggest giveaway when people use green screen is light you can tell where the light is coming from especially if say brad pitt's picture had the light coming from above or in front because they're taking a a model shot and they use the photo because they want to take a picture of the skunk so they use light coming from below so you have conflicting light sources and you can, that's how you can tell bad Photoshop is when a bad green screen is because they don't use the light properly or they didn't take the original image and apply where the lighting was going for the second image they're superimposing on top. Because the screen needs to be well lit with as few wrinkles in it as possible, nice and well, it's not, it's not. It's not just the, the quality of the green screen. It's also what you're shooting it for. Because if you're shooting a flower, for example, you want the light to be on the flower, but if you put that flower in a cave in a photo, the light sources won't make sense. Right, because it's too bright. So it's too bright. So if you have a specific job in mind, keep that in mind where you're putting that light. Because it's all about cheating people, and you got to be a good cheater to make the money. All right. And that's when you know it's a good good movie poster is when you don't see the, the different conflicting light sources. It's all one single image, so it... It fools the mind. It makes sense. Yeah, it's pretty. That it's pretty sense. funny when you see the mess ups because you're like, "That was just a bad Photoshop." Mm-hmm. Like, I can't believe somebody actually got paid mm-hmm. for that, right? Mm-hmm. But then uh, I think we had a good a good month of nature photography, don't I you think? It's pretty good. Yeah, I hope I hope y'all learned something because we do our research. Uh, you know, we we go all over the world looking for this information to bring it to you so that we can enhance your knowledge and hopefully improve your photographs. That's right. Yeah. So that your girlfriend will say, man, you are really talented. I think you ought to become a professional. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we'll, we'll see you guys next week. We're going to have a special guest next week. Yeah. Ansel's going to be coming back. So he will be coming back for I sure. hope so. He said he, he said he wanted to. We're going to be talking about how to make money with photography again. And then he's I, got some issues with clients. Well, not, not just that. Uh, I think what's important to tell people, too, is where to print. Because getting your quality prints for the good price and also how to extend that to your friends and family and on top of that when you sell it. Because that goes into the price if you if you didn't know that. It really does. It I, goes I, into the price. I think using one photo as a hook into turning it into a photo shoot is a much better approach than selling one photograph. Use that one photograph to hook them in, give them the photograph they like, Provided they will turn that into a photo shoot and put a label uh, or a price of two hundred and fifty dollars, well, what we could do is talk and we'll more get of how, ten photos how, instead of as one. As a photo photographer and a filmog- or a film person, mm. a video, video a that's hard to say. A videographer, blah, 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 blah. a videographer. How we get, how they can make money. Right, because, how to make money. Because we always talk about how much they cost us. Mm-hmm. But I think, so next week what we're going to talk about is how, as a photographer, how can you make money? Because right. like Tom says, selling a photograph might not make you the money unless you're a big name like Ansel Adams mm-hmm. because people want to buy your negatives. Right. But today with the copyright world and how you can steal things so easily, the, mo- the, the money you make is actually the jobs you do. Right. So we'll be so. back next Wednesday at 3 p.m. on Aperture and Shutter Speed. Think freebie. That's right. Make sure to submit your nature photo to us on Lone Star Internet Radio, or you can email me at dick at irlonestar.com. I'll talk to you today, Dick. I did it. No, you didn't. (laughs) Yes, I did. We'll be back next Wednesday at 3 o'clock on Aperture and Show Speed. Yeah! You're listening to Lone Star Internet Radio. everyone this is tina your host from retro saturdays i wanted to invite you to visit the lone store studios here in downtown conroe texas we're all volunteers here and we need your help in serving the montgomery county area radio media is a fun field to be in lone star internet radio 
serves Montgomery County with news, current events, local programming, and of course, music. If you are interested in volunteering and sharing your talents in media, go to IRLoneStore.com and let us hear from you. Lone Star Internet Radio, serving Montgomery County from the heart of downtown Conroe.